Welcome back. Welcome back. What's happening? Well, we are on the Fort Brock's podcast these days. Yeah. Yeah, we're coming back, baby. Yeah. It's 2024, so we're going to be doing 20 episodes this year. Are we? Yeah, because it's our welcome back. We're going to be doing 20 episodes, yeah. Okay. It's cool. mainly when we have something. Let me check schedule quick. Yeah, please uh, check no. your schedule. <laughs> We, we kind of took a little bit of a hiatus, so for yeah. those who are listening, we appreciate your patience. Uh, we ha- are in our new podcast studios. What's up? Visible Audio Studios in Century City, Los Angeles, California. Yeah. Beautiful. Not, not New York. Not New York yet. 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 That's why <laughs> it's studios, plural, because yeah. we have two other studio rooms, oh. not counting the Herb Albert room. Yeah. That's yeah. like a solo... By yourself room. Well, it's a backdrop wanna... room too. Also, shoot headshots and whatnot. Yeah. Does this sound like a commercial for Visible Audio Studios? Maybe. Kind of does. Got dot com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Plural. Plural. Yeah. yeah. Visible Audio Studios, meaning more than one. Oh shit, that's hot. You want me to conjugate Ooh. that one for you, Brandon? Yeah. You know what conjugate means? Yes. Do you know even where I got that line of dialogue? Wait, what are you talking about? From Back to the Beach. Back to the Future. Anyways, do you want to talk? Well, first, how about this? Oh, there's a new Back to the Future coming out. Well, one thing at a time, please. Okay. Let's start with some disclosures. Yeah. We are not financial advisors, wealth managers, lawyers, brokers, or CPAs. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as investment advice. Please do your own due diligence. Yeah. Damn, that came right off the tongue. It sounded like autopilot, right? Yeah, you've probably done that a few times. Just a few. Yeah. On the daily, too. Not even in a podcast. I have to say it in meetings. <laughs> Well, back to the future. No, let's start with the Super Bowl. Oh. Actually, let's just tell the listeners, we're going to be doing 20 episodes, as we mentioned, Mm -hmm. during the year, and it's about curating our point of view and our experience within crypto, blockchain, and future web. Yes. I like calling it future web because it's, we got web three now, then, you know. Jack Dorsey decided, let's just jump to Web 5. Yep. But he might double down and just say, let's just do Web 10. So we don't know if there's Web 4, Web 6. Web. So let's just call it Future Web. Yeah. And it's all encompassing of AI and LLMs and all those new fun acronyms, right? Yeah, we should do Web 7s, and then it's a casino web. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I do. Only a little bit. Um, but you're more the Vegas guy than I am. I love Vegas. For now. Well, we're both going to love Vegas here soon. Love in Vegas. Yeah, because of the F1. I like the idea of Vegas. But you actually like the action of Vegas as, along yeah. with the idea. Yeah, it's awesome. All right. It's adult Disneyland. It's funny you say Vegas because we are talking a little bit about crypto, too. Yeah. Which is basically like gambling these days. <laughs> um, Can be construed that way sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, I figure we're back, baby. Oh, my we just gosh. Hit over Did you just 50? do that? We're, we just hit over 50? <laughs> yeah. Well, we recorded this episode a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. but then everything moved so fast. By the time we were ready to put it out, we we're like, oh, shit, yeah. we got to re record this. Yeah. I mean, it hit 45 at that time. And I was like, we're back. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. <laughs> you were, we were back then. And then we just hit 52, I think. It just kissed 52. Yeah. What's up, dude? It's pretty cool. So yeah. that segues perfectly into let's talk a little bit about the Bitcoin ETF. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts? on the fact that there's an ETF of something that people could just go by themselves. Yeah, well, I mean, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I think it's great for people that want to add Bitcoin into their retirement fund. They want to use it uh, as a, you know, tax-free up to 5K for their IRA, their Roth IRA. You can just put it into an ETF now instead of going in, like, because before you can't, you can't be like, hey, I want to put all of my Bitcoin into any part of your retirement, except for, hey, I'm just going to squirrel this away and hold on to it until it's a million bucks a, a token. So, All right. All right. I like the positives that you're taking yeah. from it. The fact that it's basically making it easier for people to get involved with crypto oh, yeah. investing. Anything, sort of crypto. Anything that makes it easier, I'm, I'm in, yeah. you know? I understand the benefits of the adoption curve, right? Mm -hmm. Because it'll make it more tangible for people to get involved. I mean, it's just Bitcoin right now, currently. Mm -hmm. You know, there's talk of an Ethereum ETF. That's also they're trying to push through, which would be really interesting since there hasn't been any real regulation around 
anything outside of Bitcoin, even though no. there isn't enough even around that. I'd, I'd say Ethereum's a security, though, in my opinion. No, I know. Well, <laughs> I know this. Ca- I'm just no, no, kidding. I know you do. And it's fine. But I, I don't actually think so. I just I'm. But the idea yeah. of the ETFs. Yeah. I will say this, and this is where my cause for concern is with crypto. Crypto, what I loved about it is that you could just buy it on your own. You didn't need an intermediary. Yeah. You don't need an intermediary to buy an ETF right now. I mean, to buy crypto. Yeah. So because of that, I honestly think that I'm I'm caught, no pun intended, I'm cautiously optimistic that this is helping more of the adoption without having to sacrifice later of what might happen to the incumbents, such as banks, you know, your JP Morgan, your Blackstones, that type of group. Yeah. To do more well, you imagine, CBDCs you or centralized they, yeah. options of ways to buy crypto because you imagine they already own a shit ton anyway. Yeah. I would mm-hmm. imagine so. Yeah. But here's the thing. Anybody with real wealth usually has like their gold in their portfolio. They're trying to almost recreate the same guardrails that have been put around the stock market yeah. with crypto. And that's one of the things I loved about crypto was there was no guardrails the way there was for mm. the stock market. There wasn't gatekeepers. Yeah. And so I'm nervous well, that I mean, you they're could... trying to retroactively rein it in from the empowerment it gives any human because well, it could, is you could say that like there is a middleman in the the way that we have it now because already you have gatekeepers like ftx was a gatekeeper because they <laughs> they oh, oh sorry <laughs> you coin, had to coin, say ftx coinbase that's like the word <laughs> coinbase, coinbase. Is, a, is a gatekeeper because you're buying it like directly from them right or through you're buying it through them i believe so Okay. Oh, yeah, I guess somebody else puts it up. Hey, I want to sell this much. Any exchange you're exchanging, you're, you want X, they want to sell you X. Yeah, they, they make take fees. A permit. So, yeah, I mean, basically, they're the middleman. Well, they're, so it depends on the narrative you're crafting, right? Yeah, because they're facilitating yeah, the sale. They're of empowering it. or they're a gatekeeper. It mm-hmm. depends on which narrative you want to have on this. Yeah. But so it's like it's like if you go to a shop to buy gold, that gold is your ultimate outcome. You're not going out there mining for it. You know what I mean? Well, you can. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. And you can go out and mine most coins that are dope. So again, the open nature of what crypto offers. Yeah. That's what I liked. Yeah, the, yeah. The idea of the ETFs while it were we're definitely creating an and that an ability for more people to adopt crypto and mm-hmm. accept it. Yeah. I don't know. I think there's a cost to be had. We just don't see what the bill is yet. Okay. So that's my concern. Well, I mean, so like I'm just going to throw this out there. Say uh, you're like you wanted, uh, what would it be? Say your bank, you bank with Wells Fargo. They decide that they're going to You had to use Wells Fargo too. It's like saying <laughs> FTX, man. <laughs> Fuck. Next thing you know, you're going to say Bank of America. It's already rough enough. We've got to say J.P. Morgan. Sorry, Bank of America now has their own exchange, and they decide that they're going to be the middleman and sell you some uh, Bitcoin if you want it to hold into your account that they... They want to do a CBDC. They just want to say, go fuck yourself, Bitcoin. Let's just do a central bank digital currency. Well, okay, but I'm just saying, like, just putting it out there... Okay, say they all got together, did a central bank uh, digital currency, right? Mm-hmm. That's based off the U.S. $1 bill. Oh, you think they're going to base it off the U.S. dollar? Mm. How optimistic of you. I know. Yeah. What do you think they're going to base it off? And you Gold? Think, well, that's okay. Again, <laughs> so, and you also are saying that they're all going to get together and agree upon this, so then the JP coin is just going to get thrown away? Okay, I'm saying... Like hypothetically, I don't mean to shoot you in the foot. We're both yeah, on the not, same side. I'm not, I'm not getting shot in the foot here. I'm, this is my my explanation to you. Okay. Like why I don't think it's such a bad thing. Do you think? I don't know if it's bad. That's my my thing. We don't have enough information to know if it's yeah. bad or not. You're just, hoping it's not. Gonna I'm be hoping bad, that again. But you have a negative out, outlook as you're going into it. 
I'm not buying an ETF. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to buy my crypto directly. Yeah. You but know? I mean, it, it provides a way that grandma can have some, Here's the some B- Bitcoin exposure. So no, again, I'm like it all opens about up. it, you know? Yeah. No, it, yeah. it opens up the adoption cycle, right? Mm-hmm. Which I'm a big fan of. We're big fans of yeah. more adoption. That's the signal we always talk about. So when we're talking to card partners about crypto mining, yeah. we're talking to people in general about crypto, blockchain, or future web, yeah. it's about the adoption. That's the signal we focus on, even yeah. especially in a bear market. Uh-huh. Because people are still putting money and time and labor behind these things that you have to focus on adoption. Because yeah. when you have big corporations dumping lots of money through into this, even though the market's saying that it's not worth as much as it was, yeah, you know, again, that's the signal we focus on. We're not financial advisors, wealth managers, no. lawyers, brokers, but now my sig- my my big signal is adoption. Yeah, and you saw it in the in the market as well. Like that's why Bitcoin keeps going up. I believe is because of adoption. Yeah, yeah, agreed. But I'm just, yep. I'm not going into it negative. It's just that I don't think we have all the information, unfortunately, like we always do. Yeah that we don't see the repercussions of certain choices that are being made, but we're not able to really influence those choices yeah. either, which is also unfortunate. But it's also why I liked crypto and blockchain, because it was supposed to level the playing field. Yeah. All right. But it didn't, so now we're here. It didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and the, I mean, I've, all of the transactions were supposed to be, um, you know, transparent yet also hidden, but you know what I mean? Some lady cracked that cryptography and is able to track you down based on where you bought it. So, so all right, let's 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 move on to this next topic, right? The Super Bowl? Actually, yeah, what do you want to say about the What are you burning to say about the Super Bowl did that you, have anything to relate to this? Or does it not at all? Did you see uh, that there were zero... Crypto ads? Crypto ads this year, but yeah. there was a bunch of AI ads. So I think that's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, we go I mean, through these hype cycles. It's at the beginning of the year, so you're always going to see like something new about uh, you know technology as you go forward. So like now, it's like this is the Apple hype cycle. Vision Pro, Spa- AI, yeah, space, spatial computing. Oh, spatial computing. Yeah, yeah. See, they're just trying to create a whole new label so they don't have to pigeonhole Ooh. themselves with. No, no, no. We're not that. We're this. No, we're yeah, this. It's a, it's it's actually. Not as evil as AI, so, you know. Oh, my God. Are we going to go down the evil AI path? Okay. Oh, well, I mean, a lot of people think it's evil, and so it, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just parroting. So this actually you know, segues that... perfect for 2024. So mm-hmm. AI became a buzz. Yeah. LLMs. And it's actually going to hold over, I think, into 2024. Oh, yeah. Most things usually, what was it, 2022 was all about Web3. Did you see that... that uh uh, OpenAI's new text to video, Sora. Yes. I literally just saw it in one of the Slack groups that I'm in. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. No, no. It's okay. So Zach just showed it to me, and I was like, I love that you both saw it right as the I saw. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah. So having said that, OpenAI. Yeah. If we're going to talk about AI, which we yeah. should, because it is part of that future Absolutely. website of things. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Sam Altman's first interview with Trevor Noah on Trevor Noah's new podcast. Yeah. After he got back from you you know, his little Tino hiatus. Or no. Tino? Yeah. <laughs> uh, did Mika Kelly call him that? I don't know. I don't know. It makes me wonder now. Okay. But <laughs> that's funny. I didn't even think about that. It's like the way you talk about Hugh Jackman. Yeah, Huggy. Huggy Jackman. <laughs> I bet he would like punch me in the face if I ever called him that. No, you real. just have to do it the right way. You just can't be that creepy guy that oh, runs yeah. up to him and be like, yo, Huggy. Huggy. No, no, it's got to be something soft and smooth where we're all dining somewhere in Los Angeles and you well, just happen to be like, yo, Huggy, what's up? No, I definitely uh, saw him on set one time but didn't call him Huggy because I right. didn't want to get fired. Yeah, you probably would have been then, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That probably would have been an okay to get punched in the face moment. Yeah. But going back to, to Tino, Trevor Tino. Noah, and his Sam Altman's first interview, I believe it was, after he came back to OpenAI, after the quick outster that happened, right? Yeah. This has been chattered up a whole bunch. Yeah. Now, I, again, I don't know Sam Altman personally, and I don't have enough information to really come to a conclusion about the man, so all mm-hmm. I have is... The interviews that he's done with Lex Friedman, yeah. Guy Raz. The one he did with Guy Raz, 
his PR team should have worked with him a lot more before he did that interview because Guy asked some really great questions, and I didn't necessarily find that there was enough rationale behind Sam Alton's responses. But even, I want, I want it to be good. I want OpenAI to be good. There's a lot of things about it that they just don't have their shit together, it seems like. Mm -hmm. They're able to create cool things, yeah, but I don't necessarily know they're able to operate those cool things or manage those cool things the same right. way they're able to create them. Right. Well, <laughs> it's funny you should ask. <laughs> okay. So, because they're able to build some of the things that they're able to build, but they didn't have their shit together enough to manage the way that this CEO outster situation had happened, mm -hmm. there's a cause for concern. There's a cause for concern about that the way that whole thing went down. The thing of it is, and the thing I truly love about future web, blockchain, crypto, is it's permissionless. Mm -hmm. What they've been doing for the past you know, decade, OpenAI, prior to them really hitting the accelerator of the critical mass, knowing what they are, has been permissionless. And that's awesome that they can just build it and then people can start using it. That was one of the greatest things about web, or web, 2.0, and Chris yeah. Dixon talks about it in his new book, which we'll get to in a minute. But Sam Altman has become the poster child for OpenAI, and because of that, they're the ones that are kind of leading the discussion. Yeah, you have other companies like Coir, Anthropic, Bard. There's so many others, and then there's even more that are going to be coming out. Yeah, at least in this capacity, because there's been AI that's yeah. been developed for just as long excuse me, as OpenAI, or maybe even longer in some cases, but the way they went about it with the nonprofit structure, it's very business savvy, and I love that because now there's a lot of people trying to use that same, I guess you'd say, strategy in deploying a company and an effort. Yeah. But again, it's very interesting. I don't think there's enough rationale. I don't know that we're going to see the benefit or consequences of the decision-making or the lack of diligence that's being done or even those making those decisions until, you know, a little bit of time from now. And that, it's a cause for concern. But I don't trust our government to make any real good regulation around it to help steward that ship either. So. I don't trust the government. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you sound like that old guy. It's just that here's the thing. People who can build really cool tech yeah. are not necessarily the best stewards for it. And those who I mean, are they, in positions like to. tech. Yeah, but those that are in positions to govern such things don't have enough of the information to make educated decisions in the best interest of that tech. Okay. So it's hard to get people who understand the full scope of it, right? Because it is. It's just a challenge. Yeah. How do you understand all facets of the decision-making process? OpenAI even put out uh, a call to help with its governance and safety, right? They, they were doing these grants, Mm -hmm. At the time, I want to say it was October of last year when they yeah. decided on it. I haven't seen who they announced or how they went about it because everything got so cannibalized by the story of him being announced that I haven't seen enough of what happened with that grant program regarding governance and safety. It seemed like a reactionary response to a lot of the criticisms, criticisms they were having with ChatGPT at the time. So again, there's not enough follow through or follow up with a lot of the discussions that are happening around concerns because the accountability factor gets cannibalized by our media cycle and our attention spans. Again, I hope for the best on this and cautiously optimistic of it all. You know, it's a phrase that I love to use because, you know, being in venture capital, it's, it lends itself to wanting for it to succeed for short-term reasons. Yeah. But the longer outcome of this, you know, that cliche of planting a tree, knowing you're not going to bask in its shade, these yeah. are the decisions that are happening now that we don't know is going to happen later. Again, ETFs, very similar situation, you know, and a lot of people talk about it and try to relate it to what happened with the Internet and whatever happened with each different technological uh, evolution. Yeah. But they're not all the same. I but, mean, if we want to write governance for this stuff, I say we just... Open up ChatGPT, 
<laughs> write us out some like, like you're gonna <laughs> you want the prompt from Chat GPT like yeah. how can you govern your shit? Yeah, like oh I'm sure they'll do, do a great job sourcing that. AI, right? So here's I mean like so if it is let's let's say it is aggregating all governance decision making from the past just say thirty years. Yeah. Do you think it's well equipped to make good decisions? <laughs> mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe we should just like cut out like maybe the eighties, uh, cut out the nineties. <laughs> uh, so when was that moment of bliss? What was that year or decade? Yeah, maybe was like two thousand seven, right before the two thousand eight crash. That was pretty good. People it, it were felt making blissful. money, dude. It, it, well, it's <laughs> it's supposedly it's almost like E, right? You have this wonderfully sensational moment, and then all of a sudden yeah. the crash. Yeah. I wouldn't know from experience, but I've heard. Yeah. Well, Th that's man. actually honest, <laughs> but you know, yeah. being on video, I don't know that people would believe that what I just said was true. They're like, "No, nah, he dropped E." Dropped E. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about the entertainment network. <laughs> yeah, I was talking about the entertainment <laughs> network. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were saying you dropped it off of your, your so, streaming platforms. Moving forward in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in 2024, right? We've talked a little bit about the Bitcoin mm -hmm. ETF. In fact, there might be an Ethereum ETF. Yeah. And now we've talked a little about open AI because it is, it's very topical. Yeah. Um, they've been leading the charge. I guess we could talk a little bit about 2023 and the reckoning that happened with FTX. The reckoning. Ledger being hacked. I mean, it wasn't just FTX and Ledger. There were yeah. so many things that happened as a, a reckoning in crypto. You had Gemini, a big Ledger hack. The Winklevi again, you yeah. know, in the headlines somehow. Um, I love the fact that I believe it was, um, who was it? Uh, block one with their new bullish, the people from EOS, uh, Brendan Blummer's group bought CoinDesk. And then you have CoinMarketCap being owned by Binance. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool to know that <laughs> the companies that are in positions of power in the crypto space, blockchain space, are own also the buying the media outlets. Yeah. <laughs> They're owning the information pipeline. Well, I mean, Amazon owns, uh, was it the Wal or Washington Post? Yeah, they they own media. Yeah. I, I get it. It's you know skateboarding's done it. Look at Thrasher. Yeah, yeah. Thrasher has a heavy hand with Deluxe. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are good strategies. What can yeah. I say? It's awesome to when you own your own media, and you know it's yeah. almost like the best make, way to shill shit, right? Yeah, it makes it easy to get your stories published. I would say <laughs> you don't, don't have know. to pitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like this is the best story ever. Let me tell hey, you. Hey, have you seen this new thing that we're releasing? Oh my goodness. <laughs> It's amazing. Oh, I don't know if we're going to run that story. Well, you will if you want this job. <laughs> yeah. It slices. It dices. <laughs> so, yeah. It's pretty funny. Yeah. But, no, I, I get where you're going with that. But yeah. 2023 had a huge reckoning for crypto because there does need to be regulation and guidelines, in my opinion. Again, I just don't know that we're all informed enough to make educated decisions. Yeah. And we've never been really good humans at governing ourselves in an agile fashion. Yeah. It's more like, you know, whoever screams the loudest wins. Yeah, whoever screams the loudest, and then we go with that for a little bit, and we're like, mm, that's not really working out. All right, get ready to pick up this name I'm about to drop. Oh, my goodness. So I, I got to visit with a, a lady, wonderful lady, Miss Catherine Hardwick, the director of Twilight, Uh huh. and she said something that resonated with me. She's she like, got Bitcoin. No. <laughs> no, this was a few years ago when we okay. were working on some project stuff in the production space. She goes, the first lie they hear is the one they believe mm -hmm. and it was in reference to media yeah and it was just such a poignant response because if you've done anything in the space of media or even consumed enough of it yeah it's pretty valid yeah yeah you know what i mean and so it takes time to hear what the truth is but does that get buried and where's that narrative yeah this is you know we were never into politics or at least i wasn't maybe you were Mm -hmm. I've always been into politics. Okay, but I don't want to start talking about politics, but it does feel like crypto and blockchain and AI are increasingly become highly political. Oh, for sure. But at the end of the day, I, I mean, we're at well, the beginning I mean, of the day. You have an industry that makes billionaires, you're going to have some politics in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so, okay. So what you're saying is if Bored Apes never would have come out, nobody would have got rich, there just would have been those mysterious Ethereum, yeah. Bitcoin... And, you know, Dogecoin billionaires, yeah. but because of Bored Apes and OpenSea, <laughs> <laughs> because NFTs and everybody started making money, that's where regulation really stepped in. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Did you know that? Uh, I think I saw. Okay. I'm not even going to say it if it's not true, though. 
But yeah, more... please don't see the first lie they hear and yeah. the first uninformed response that's stated. Okay. Well, it goes something like it's like more ETF or more NFTs were sold um, in this last period than in all of the height of NFTs. Yeah. No, it, the again, adoption is high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The market value is not indicative of that. But then again, now it's more like the stock market yeah. where perception is ruling the value because, and I still to this day, and, you know, there's analysts that will say what they want to say about mm -hmm. it. But at the end of the day, Facebook, before they were an IPO, yeah, was worth X amount, breaking an X amount of dollars. The next day after they went IPO, their stock price went down and their valuation went down. Mm -hmm. But in reality, they made more money because 24 hours later, they had more liquidity mm -hmm. because they made much more money through their revenue model streams. So it's not indicative of the reality, but the reality is the perception of the stock price became their new reality. Mm. Make sense? Yeah. It doesn't. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's my point, not point. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't. It's very yeah. Abbott and Costello, right? Who's on first? Yeah. What? Who? Who? Have you seen that skit? No. Oh, never mind. That's like super old. It's even before my time, but it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Your grades are Sean, dude. Beautiful, aren't they? <laughs> I'm trying to turn into the most interesting man in the world, you know, the Dos yeah. guy, or maybe yeah. George Hamill. You're, yeah. you're doing a, good, a decent job. De oh, you were going to say good, but then yeah. you wrangled it in. You didn't want to give me any ego. Yeah, yeah. You were yeah. like, I'm just going to give you this much dopamine. Well, I mean, because you, you know, you keep dropping names, and I got to pick them up, I'm sweeping up uh, after you. Well, don't you around. have a biodegradable bag? We're somewhere in LA. We yeah. got to get a Roomba. A Roomba to pick up all, all the these names. names you're dropping. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who was talking about you being Huggy Jackman. Oh, that's true, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was an on-set sort of thing. It's not hard to, you know. I do now. Now, yeah. Now, now I do. All right. Moving on. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the book that Chris Dixon of Andreas and Horowitz came yeah, out. Yeah, do not uh, make up a cute, shortened version of his name. C. Dix, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I I love what you did there, you know. Yeah. You I I have a feeling you've been thinking of that one. Like you were waiting to drop that. Yep. I feel like this wasn't even like, yep. like five minutes ago. This was maybe like five weeks ago. You're like, we're gonna talk about Chris Dixon. Oh, wait a minute. And it just came to you. This joke nope. came to you, huh? No, was it on it was... our Vesta board? <laughs> no. <laughs> nope, not yet. That that's pretty good though. Thank I'm sure you. he hasn't heard that before. Hmm? Hopefully not. But anyways. Mr. Dixon, yes, of Andreas and Horowitz fame, I can mm -hmm. he is kind of you know, yeah. Andreas and Horowitz has been able to create a sort of tech celebrity around some of their bigger GPs. Yeah, uh, he's been running the crypto side. Katie Hahn was with them before she broke out and did her own solo yeah. crypto thing, which and got I, into regulation. No, no, that was prior to. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, she was of that whole DOJ Silk Road thing. And there's plenty of media out there about yeah. Katie on. She's done a really got good job creating her brand. Yeah. But Chris Dixon, he's been he wants to work on his brand too. So he came out with this book. Yeah. Read write own. So have you read it? No. But you have. I have. I have. And I've been looking forward to it. I pre-ordered it. Uh -huh. Um because any media that looks of value that I, that has to do with crypto blockchain Future yeah. web, <laughs> I'm interested in. Uh, I've read uh, Bitcoin in the age of some. I forget the age of Bitcoin crypto. I'm butchering it, but we'll put it in our show notes. The name of the title. It was one of my first books that I read within the space because there wasn't many mm -hmm. out. Yeah. And then there was uh, NFTs are a scam by Bobby Hundreds, Bobby Kim, and Bobby Kim's really good at creating hype. I mean, he had that whole atom bomb drop, and then he was pulling it off OpenSea because they couldn't enforce the the residuals of resales. Oh, yeah. And I loved him for it. Yeah. I mean, that's still kind of the problem with it all. Still? Yeah. It's going to yeah. be an ongoing problem for a while because even though the smart contracts are there, they're not smart enough to enforce certain things. Yeah. And then if it's meta-based, like if you're doing, you know, your metadata mm -hmm. that can be stripped out too so there's workarounds to that so yeah there's a lot of solutions now i mean people always used to joke especially in 2022 crypto's a solution in search of a problem but now it's created 
problems that need solutions within itself. Yeah. So you know it's you know it manifested their ability to need. But anyways, getting back to Chris Dixon's rewrite own, um, I thought it was awesome for people who don't know about crypto or blockchain, especially blockchain, because that's what he really leans into. Uh, he does a good job with the history. If you're not interested in the history of tech, you will find it, you potentially could find it boring, but it's awesome because it's so thorough. Mm -hmm. Now, is it, you know, going to be on Oprah's, you know, books? Probably not because it, it doesn't have the same layman's, in my opinion, or the same kind of style to it that Bobby Hundreds can do with NFTs are a scam. Yeah. But... Bobby's book doesn't necessarily give you the breadth of depth that Chris Dixon's book does. It's like, I want those two to make out and create the baby that's really going to be the book that might really help it. I don't know if it'll become Atlas Shrug or Dianetics, but I think if those two hook up, it could mm -hmm. do something cool. But the book was awesome because it did. It provided so many thought pieces. One of the best things, or one of the things that I love that he said is he talks about blockchain and he's trying to compare it or trying to articulate it to people on the value of it. And people say, you know, can't you build a building with wood? And you can. Yeah. But then when steel came out, you can build buildings with steel, but they're stronger. There's more benefit to it, right? Yeah. That's how he articulates blockchain. And it's, you can build the same things that you have currently, but blockchain is that version. It's the steel to the wood. Yeah. And when I heard that, it was really good. There's a few sound bites like that. And I'm sure if you go through Twitter, you'll see plenty of people kind of articulating similar thoughts. But that one really resonated with me. He said a few things, too, that, you know, I might have a difference of opinion, but he wrote a book, so it's harder to argue those because he, you know, he wrote the whole damn thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but having said that, I think it's a great read. Listen, I listen to it on Audible. People get pissed when I say I read, but then they're like, Oh, so when do you read? I'm like, well, I listen to it while I'm running. Yeah. Then they're like, you're not reading. I'm like, well, you got a point. Yeah. So I'm listening to it. Yeah. On Audible. But do you have any questions about it? I mean, you're just sitting there letting me just... Burp, 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 burp. About a book? Yeah. No. <laughs> about a book? It's an audio book. <laughs> Does that change it? No. Do you not like listening to audio books? Uh, I do. Uh, okay, that's I was going to say. how I ingest most of my... Reading because we live in Los Angeles, you do now as well. Yeah, which means that we have a lot of time in our cars in on our the traffic. road, <laughs> in the traffic. In so the traffic, <laughs> I listen to a lot of. Uh, that's where I mainly consume most of my media is through podcast books. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been uh, riding the electric street bike. We don't need to go too far deep into that subject. Yeah, but it makes uh, my trips quicker when when I'm able to get there. On it, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So I don't get to listen to as much in that um, anymore. So I have to run more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I highly recommend Read Write Own Read, to write anybody own. who wants to learn more about blockchain. It, it's okay. really focused on blockchain because he has a lot of valid points in it. Yeah. There's a lot of thought-provoking um, just details in there, things to really get it going. Again, I have some contrast of opinions on certain things, but... It doesn't matter. My contrast of opinion just doesn't matter in relation to that book because yeah. more people should read it than should not. Like, what are you going to say that when he says, like, it's like building with steel? You can't refute that. You're like, okay. What I about, wouldn't want to. I like bricks? that analogy. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like that analogy. No, I feel you on that. He, he like One of the things he says, he says people say it's like a, an advanced spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. You know, he says, but it's so much more. It's a supercomputer. Yeah, yeah, it is. But I mean, Airtable is also a better version of Google Sheets. Mm. But it's still a spreadsheet, just it has more power. Now, blockchain, I guess you'd say simplifying as just a simple spreadsheet. Yeah. You know, it's too oversimplification. But then you're just getting into semantics of what you, which analogy is best. Yeah. Right? We're just trying to get people to adopt it. And I think his book will help with that. I think his book will be something that people cite and adopt as their own point of view because they don't have a point of view. Yeah. And that's a good thing because books usually do that. They help people crystallize their thoughts or at least arrive at opinions. Sometimes you could actually say that it, it 
doesn't work the way it's intended because if people read something that they like hearing enough, yeah, it becomes their opinion without any real thought to it, yeah, or any challenge to it, which that makes sense. It has its own issues, but whatever. Yeah, you know what I mean. It'll. I think it'll help move the needle, or it should. Right. He, yeah. he put some good stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I don't have a book that I can recommend right now. Why not? Well, because I just listen to mostly fantasy books. What's a fantasy book you've listened to recently? Uh, Deathly Hollows. A that's Harry an old Potter book. Series. Yeah, it's a good book though. Yeah, I just listened to basically all of them back to back. Yeah. And then now I'm doing the Corman Strike series. I go back and forth on that. All right. All right. Yeah, helps me. Well, gives you something to think about. But if you want a book that you can't listen to, book on tape, uh-huh. you have to actually read. Mm-hmm. Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow by Daniel Kinnaman. It really is a really good book. There's no audio of it? Uh, There's well, got to be somebody who did something on YouTube. <laughs> well, it, it, you can't really because it has like some pictures that you have to like digest mentally. Oh, interesting. Yeah. All right. It's about thinking and like the process of thinking and like – Accessing your memory, mm-hmm. basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, There's a lot of good books like that. Well, I mean, he did win a Nobel Prize in economics, so. Oh, well, we're going to put him in the show notes. Okay. <laughs> but a really amazing book. All right. I want to check it out now. Yeah. You seem pretty sold on this. But you can't listen to it on book on tape. Damn it, I don't know if I'm going to read it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've read more books in the past five years than I have my whole life yeah. because I've listened to them. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Thank um, you for all those people who take time out of their day, maybe get paid to do it, but to read an entire book and record it so I can listen to it. Here's to you. Thank you. Well, they can do that now at visibleaudiostudios.com. <laughs> <laughs> they can record, you know, yeah. the audio for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll put Come that in the show notes, too. <laughs> well, man, I mean, this is a good way, I think, to introduce our welcome back. Welcome back. Because it's been a little bit of a break, so yeah. we appreciate those who continue to listen yeah. and sharing it with others because, you know, if we're creating yeah. value here, please share it with others. Yeah. Give it a share. Give it a share. Yeah. Yeah. You Say, want... hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> I enjoy doing this for you. <laughs> so you take this and show somebody else. All right. So I'm going to give some, something. some of the lead outs now, okay? Okay. So the music is by the Celebrators, who are no longer together. Oh. Yeah, our boy Brad McLean informed me, and this was right at the end of last year, that the Celebrators broke up. Okay. But what's nice to know is we get to celebrate the Celebrators every time you listen to the beginning and end of, of the Fort Brooks podcast. Fort Brooks. Yeah. So other than that. Where's the you, bud? The music. Oh, I think you were pointing at the R. property R. owner. R.I.P. Oh, okay. <laughs> music. So everything will be included in our show notes of key things that we talked about. So please check those out. And again, we're going to be releasing 20 episodes per year. The next episode we drop, we're going to have an actual schedule of when those episodes will be coming out throughout the year. Mm-hmm. So that we can give more consistency to our listeners. And we appreciate you. So thank you very much for listening. Yeah. Thanks, man. And thanks, Zach. Oh, Zach. Yeah, Yeah, we got to include him, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, he's a special man. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Zach. Do you want to come on and say thanks? No? No. Yeah.